We had a good practice. Uh, as far as the uh, injuries go, Rylan uh, has not gone live yet, but he's doing more and more basketball activity every day. So we're hopeful he can possibly play Friday. We'll put him through more stuff tomorrow and see how he responds. And it'll end up being a game time decision. So we, we've done well up in Nashville. Obviously, the one tournament uh, that we've had that wasn't in Nashville since I've been here was in Tampa. And we didn't, didn't perform that well. So we uh, we like the tournament being back up in Nashville. I think the more important thing is our guys are locked in, ready to go. I thought we've had a couple of really good practices here these last two days. So, you know, and it's good. We've got the bye all the way to Friday. I think it's the first time since 91 that we've had back-to-back -back seasons with a top four seed. So getting top four seed's a big deal. It's hard to win four straight games. You know, there's four teams that'll try to win three straight games. Typically, that's where the uh, the winner comes out of one of those four, typically. Now, obviously, it could go the other way. So, and I, you know, who knows who will end up playing on Friday. But Florida, you know, if that's who it ends up being, handled us pretty well. And then it's been a long time since we played Missouri. And Georgia, kind of the same. It's been a while since we played them. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of watch how that game goes tonight, watch how the game goes tomorrow night, see who we end up playing, make sure our guys are locked in, ready to go. But you know we we've had a, a good regular season, you know, thirteen and five, and arguably the best conference in college basketball. One of the top two is uh, is a really good year. So you know we we don't want to diminish the fact we've had a great year, but it was a little disappointing. We felt like we could have, you know, won the league, had a share of it. So now we got to regroup. And I think our guys have done that, get their heads back in the right place and try to go for a tournament championship because the league hands out two, uh, two champions every year. So Tennessee's got one, and then tournament champion will yet to be determined. And we're, we're going to try to do what we can to get this thing done here. Yeah, Coach, just what's the significance of having a guy like Latrell back, especially if you end up playing Florida, who he wasn't available to play against? Yeah, I – I mean, he's played really well. You kind of look at efficiency numbers. He's our highest rate. You know, you go to like Ken Palm's individual player, offensive efficiency. He's our he's our highest rated guy. He doesn't turn the ball over. He makes open shots, and, and he really guards. I mean, he follows the scouting report. He knows what he's supposed to do. So, it, it's crucial we get him back. You know, it'd be great if we could have him and Ryan both backs, and we get some backcourt depth. It's going to be hard to win three games in a row with playing Aaron and Mark as many minutes as they've had to play with both Trelly and Ryle and them being out. So, you know, if we can get them both back, I think gives us a lot better shot to win three in a row. You know, but we, we definitely are a better team when we have both them. And for sure, you asked about Trelly. When we have Trelly back, he's, you know, he was playing really good basketball when he went out. And then we dropped a couple when he was out. So it'd be nice to have him back. Yeah, just kind of in general, what's your approach like when you get into tournament play and you don't know what opponent you're going to be uh, playing? How does that preparation, what, what's that like? You know what? I mean, you split the scouts up between your staff. Now, the conference tournament is a little different than the NCAA tournament. Conference tournament, you've already played everybody, so you've already had the assistant that's had the scouts. You're kind of brushing up on some stuff. You know, when we get to the NCAA tournament, you'll assign – one guy of the team, you know you're playing the first round for sure, and then you'll sign the two other guys. And, and in that, you've got a day between games. So you'll – with the team, we don't really do anything for the next two before we play the one. Now, in this, today, like today, we went over some stuff for Kentucky. You know, we try to pick things that apply to both. You know, like, like we've got Florida, Georgia, Missouri. So what common things are – you know, do all three of those teams have? What common things would Kentucky have with these? Let's go over that. And then, you know, if there's some different stuff that they do, let's make sure we go over it in one of these days. You know, we kind of went over the Florida, Georgia, Missouri yesterday. You know, Monday was just all ourselves. Tuesday was the first game. Wednesday we went more the Kentucky route. And then tomorrow, well, we still won't know who we're playing, you know, during the day because we'll play the winner of the last game at night. So 
we, you know, the first time we'll know for sure we're playing when we have any kind of thing is a walkthrough Friday, and we play in the afternoon Friday. So, or I'm sorry, we play in the evening Friday, but we'll, that walkthrough will be fine. And obviously the Saturday afternoon game, it's just it's these conference tournaments when you've already played the team once, kind of reminding them of what the game plan was going on the first time, and then any tweaks you make to it, and just kind of review that. Uh, Latrell talked a little bit after the Arkansas game just about how he's kind of getting still back in shape and getting his legs under him kind of thing. I mean, how, how long of a process just when a guy is out like that do you think it takes for him to get back to, to full go and full conditioning kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it takes long. If, if the, you know, he was in really good shape before he went out. I think he's back pretty close right now, I would say. I mean, he's, I thought he's looked great in practice all week. So I, I – I mean, if he's not 100%, he's pretty close. He's got to be about 90, 95. You said a few times that you need the freshmen to kind of step up and play a little bit above their age. How have they handled kind of turning the page of the regular season and looking ahead to their first pro season? I mean, I think they've been good. I thought Sam's had a good couple of days of practice. Jaron uh, had as good a practice he's ever had in here this week. You know, I think. Mo Diabate's kind of coming into his own. I mean, he, shoot, on Monday this week, he kind of dominated practice in a lot of regards. So we, I think all three of those guys have played well. Davin's been shooting it well. Uh, he shot it really well again today. Shoot, he goes on the scout team, he kind of becomes a different kind of player. So I think the freshmen are, I mean, it is March, the middle of March. They've had a lot of games under their belt. They've got 31 games under their belt. So. Don't expect them to play like freshmen anymore, and I think they're I think they're all playing their best basketball, which is what we want the whole team to be doing come March. When you look at the, how the bracket can shake out, it, it could be a little bit of a redemption tour for you guys in terms of maybe Florida, then Kentucky, then Auburn and Tennessee. Is that something that the players have a chip on their shoulder? Are they like eager to prove or to have that redemption? And how do you kind of handle that mindset? Yeah, Pringle's the first one that brought it up. I think he called it a get back tour or something. You know. But, yeah, I mean, we've – I thought we got embarrassed at Florida. I mean, if – you know, unless there's an upset, we'll see Florida. There, there could not be an upset. But, you know, if there's if there's no upsets, we'd play Florida, Kentucky, Tennessee. Obviously, the longer you go, the more chance there is for upsets. But, you know, all three of those teams, those are the last three teams we lost to. And Florida embarrassed us, Kentucky embarrassed us, and we lost a tough one at home to Tennessee – but they kind of embarrassed us at their place. So, you know, now all three were road games. None of these games up in Nashville beat true road games, although K Kentucky's fans have come pretty strong up in Nashville in the past. But, you know, it's technically a neutral game for everybody. So we got to play a little better than we did the last time, a lot better than we did the last time against these teams. But I think there's a chip on their shoulder. Any competitor, after you get embarrassed, wants to come back and show that, you know, I'm not that bad. We didn't as bad as we looked at Florida. We're not that bad. As bad as giving up 117 to Kentucky. You know our defense isn't that bad. We need to come back and compete a lot harder on these next go rounds with all these teams. You've mentioned it a few times this year, and you just mentioned it now with Pringle kind of speaking up. How good is that to see the maturity he's shown over the course of the season? No, he's gotten a lot better over the last month. I mean, he's been really good talking. You know, kind of being a better leader for us, getting his teammates to kind of buy in. You know, he's, I mean, you guys kind of gotten to know him over these last two years. He's got great personality. He's upbeat. He's, you know, he's definitely not afraid to talk. So, no, it's been good, and he's been, he's been really good. So, I, you know, I, I've told him that. I've told the team that. And he's, see, people can change people. You know, and I, I, me being a high school coach, you're able to see it. You know, certain kids, you work with them, you get, a little frustrated, some stuff, but pe people have the capability to change, and it doesn't matter how old they get. You know, it, people can always change, and I think he's changed a lot, and he's always been a leader. It's just whether he's, you know, being a positive leader all the time, and he's been very good for the last month. I mean, he's been one of our best, more vocal leaders, and he, he's obviously willing to, eager to speak up, and we need him doing the right things, saying the right things. He's been doing that for the last month. All right, thanks.